Now, the Trump era could have some Americans rethinking our stance towards Russia, and it certainly has Russians looking back across the water at an unusual new president. For those who see Trump as a potential authoritarian bent on bullying civil society, some thinkers are pointing to the example of the artistic resistance within communist Russia itself. To that end, Russian-American novelist Gary Steingard was just hailing that SNL skit, noting satire was a major form of resistance in the USSR and should play a similar role in, wait for it, Trumpistan. Our very special guest today is that novelist, Gary Steingard, the author of Little Failure, Absurdistan, and The Russian Debutante's Handbook. His works have been named Best Books of the Year by the New York Times, Washington Post, and Chicago Tribune. He's received numerous awards, including the Stephen Crane Award for Best First Fiction, which means if people haven't read one of your books and they're watching at home, they should. Please, please, somebody has to. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. You, you are really perfectly positioned for this. What did you like about that SNL parody, and why does it mm -hmm. matter when you look at Donald Trump, who seems to respond to Alec Baldwin a lot more than he responds to <laughs> newspapers? It was an absolutely brilliant parody. Uh, in a way, that's, it's the opposite of fake news. What we saw was the real news uh, through a satiric lens, but this is exactly what people need to know about how Russia is manipulating the election, how Tillerson, who runs ExxonMobil and has dealings with uh, Putin, is, you know, the shirtless Putin and Tillerson are beautiful together. Uh, so it explains things to people in a fun, informative way. Uh, and like I said, it's the truth, as opposed to all the lies that people get when, they, when their Facebook browser gives it to them. What we see in closed societies or those that are more on the authoritarian spectrum is a squeezing of speech, a squeezing of civil society. Um, in Russia, what was the outcome of that in terms of culture? Well, culture existed, so if we wanted to be dissidents, under the Soviet era and increasingly under the Putin era, you and I would be in a kitchen and I would be whispering stuff to you over borscht, and that would be our criminal conspiracy to tell the truth. Uh, in Putin's Russia today, something like that, uh, something like SNL, would not be aired on one of the major channels, certainly not with the level of satire that it has. Uh, there's a couple of very small channels that have more um, interesting and, and truthful fare, but they only reach a very small percentage of the populace. So. Maybe SNL, in a way, is a kind of canary in a coal mine. Mm. Uh, if uh, Alec Baldwin can't do what he does so well, then we know we're truly, completely uh, not in a good place. <laughs> and, and you wrote Trumpistan. What is Trumpistan? Trumpistan is interesting. It's this idea, uh, people always ask me, for example, they say, Gary, uh, so we're going to have this new regime. Should I read 1984 by Orwell? Should I read uh, you know, one of Margaret Atwood's novels, dystopian novels? These are all great choices, but I think to understand Trumpistan fully, one has to not read, but watch The Sopranos. The Sopranos is, I think, as close as we can get to what a small, insular, completely corrupt family looks like uh, as it goes, as it's makes its way through the world. Uh, I've been just watching a few episodes here and there, and the way, for example, Tony talks to AJ, his ne'er-do-well son, is so reminiscent of the way Trump responds to his own children. Um, there's so much in there uh, to, to tell us what life will be like in Trumpistan. I mean, part of what you're getting at is there's a difference between the gaps in policies that democracies or elections are supposed to address, right? People want different things, and corruption itself, which undermines a government or a people. I mean. One of the most amazing parts of the Trump University litigation was that people who were the most diehard Trump supporters were the customers. Those are the people who spent thousands of dollars to go to Trump University. And over time, many of them felt conned. Yeah. Um, what does a con look like in what you call Trumpistan or in a society where true believers have, have taken in and become boosters, what turns them, if anything? Well, we've seen, I mean, you've talked in a previous segment about the Goldman Sachs administration. Uh, it's absolutely unbelievable. But in some ways, satire flourishes best when evil and stupidity collide. And it's <laughs> not just evil people, but also stupid people. And, and, you know, when you have Ben Carson doing HUD and Rick Perry doing energy, you, you've got a little bit of each. So, uh, but the important thing is, I think, that there's something not funny, even though this is satire, there's something not funny about the idea that the war against the powerless is about to truly ramp up hmm. with this administration. Uh, and in fact, many of the people that will suffer will actually be the people who voted him into office. Uh, it's sad, but again, I think as artists, as satirical artists, there's no way we can't laugh and encourage others to laugh. Hmm. Because I don't think there's a better weapon against somebody like Donald Trump, a, a thin-skinned individual like him, uh, than uh, Alec Baldwin just being himself. It's Laughter is the best medicine. Gary Steingart, thanks for being here today. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.